Learn how to create explainer videos by using vector objects here inside of After Effects. In this video, I'll be showing how you can quickly gather and animate a detailed project by putting together this city animation. The best thing is this type of animation is incredibly easy and it doesn't take long to do. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video. It truly does help out our channel a lot. And if you're ready, let's jump in and let's get started. So here we are in After Effects and the question is, how do we obtain these type of graphics? Well, you have to design them all in Adobe Illustrator. However, if you're like me and you don't have time to design and you also don't want to learn how to do it, you can come here to freepix.com and you can literally type in any sort of vector scene that you want and you can choose from a handful of free vector graphics that you can instantly download. However, the unfortunate part is before you bring this over to After Effects, we have to set this up in Adobe Illustrator before we go ahead and start animating each of these objects individually. After downloading the vector file of your choice, you can open up the Illustrator file or the .eps file. By double clicking, this will open it inside of Adobe Illustrator. The question is, why are we using Adobe Illustrator before we go over to After Effects? And that's because we need to put every object on its own layer here inside of After Effects so we can animate that individually. So we use Illustrator to set this up correctly. And this is an incredibly easy process. And just by knowing this, your skills as a motion designer are just gonna go tenfold through the roof. So here we are in Illustrator. You wanna go to your layers tab and you'll usually see a couple layers here. Maybe there's a background. You can start turning things off to see uh, where things are kind of layered. What we wanna do is you typically go into the main bulk, which in my case is gonna be called objects. We can open up this group and you'll see a few other groups in here. Just go ahead and start isolating them, see like what is what. If you don't want something, you can just select that layer and come here to the trash can and delete it. And you know, you can start kind of filtering through what you want and what you don't want. However, we need to put each of these buildings on their own layer. And we'll see that a lot of these objects are within their own group. So I'll come here to the top group, for example, I'll open it up. So for example, I wanna put this plane in its own layer. So all I need to do is come here to the bottom, create a new layer, and I can come here and just take this plane group and bring it to this layer here at the top. I can then rename it to plane. So now when I import this file into After Effects, then now the plane's gonna be on its own individual layer, allowing me to animate that separately from everything else. So I can follow this process and put maybe a few clouds into their own layers and also say the sun. And then you can just double click and rename them. So another thing to consider, should you put every path into its own layer? And the question is no. So for example, all, everything that's left here are these stars in the sky here. I wanna put all these paths into one single layer and I'll show you how you can separate and animate these stars separately inside of After Effects. Okay, so that's more the manual way to layer everything, but there's a much faster way to do this here in Illustrator. So for example, we can come here to this group here, which is gonna be the foreground. And instead of creating new layers, all I need to do is select the group on top of the hierarchy here, come here to the hamburger icon and click on release to layer sequence. And everything inside that group will be put into its own layer. So then I can just put this on top. There it is. So then now I can quickly go to the next group, do the same exact thing. And now everything in there within their own layers as well, bring them up and I'll just go ahead and repeat the process one more time. So now everything is layered. You have the ability to go and just, you know, rename everything as you see fits if you want to do that. So everything is looking good. But one last thing I absolutely want to do is come here to artboards and I want to double click on this artboard icon right here. And this will allow me to edit the width and height. So I want this to be a 1920 by 1080, you know, artboard. So to fit my video resolution, I'll click OK. And then all I need to do is come here, select everything, and I can just hold down shift on my keyboard. This will allow me to scale everything up and I can just bring this here. Beautiful. All right. And then when you're happy, go to file, save as and save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. OK, so now with our Illustrator saved, we can now take this Illustrator file, import it into After Effects. You'll receive this pop up. Make sure it's set to composition and you click OK. Here you'll see the composition that was created. All you need to do is double click on it. And since we've already formatted it for 1920 by 1080, it should appear here inside of After Effects just in that resolution. And you'll see that we have all of our layers that we separated inside of Illustrator now here inside of After Effects. So the next logical task would be to animate it. However, before we start animating, you're gonna have to actually adjust the anchor points for every layer. So for example, by default, every single layer that we have here, the anchor point is in the center of our composition. So for example, if we were to add a rotation animation, our building would animate around that anchor point, which is not good. So what we'll do is come here to the top, grab the pan behind tool and go through every layer by selecting one at a time and just move the anchor point onto those objects. So maybe in the center of a plane, for example, would be good. But specifically, you're gonna wanna turn on and off the layers to see what is selected and just move those anchor points to where you want the center of that animation to take place. 
Before we move further into the video, we have a sponsor, and that's us. If you use After Effects or Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out our Motion Duck extension, which has over 20,000 editable templates for your projects. For example, you can browse, import, and edit templates all from the Motion Duck extension, so you'll be able to save hours of time on every project while producing high-quality work. You can also download our free 100 template pack with the links in the description below. And if you purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. So I moved my anchor points for every single object. You'll see that here that all the anchor points are in different locations depending on the object. I've also color coded my layers here so I know what is foreground, midground, and background, and it's going to depend on how you want to animate things. So let's go ahead and show how we can quickly animate all this fairly quick. So what we could do here is take, so for example here, so, so for example here, I can come here to our foreground tree and I can see that this is the tree right here. You know, for example, all I need to do is maybe hit S on my keyboard for scale. I can add a keyframe for it and move it forward in time, maybe by a half second to almost a second. Set to zero percent. I can select both keyframes, hit F9 to make them easy ease. And maybe if I want to go to the graph editor, I can edit these up real quick, you know, to do whatever I want. And specifically that tree will be animated. So then what I can do is take these keyframes, copy them, and since our anchor points are in place, I can go ahead and select every other tree here inside of our composition and just paste in that scale animation. So, so now we, all of our trees, so now all of our trees in our composition are gonna have an animation like this, and that's pretty cool. One of my favorite animating techniques is to do an overshoot animation. So for example, I can isolate one of these buildings and then hit S for my keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for it. I'll move that keyframe forward in time to maybe like a second or almost a second. Set the scale to 0%, so then we'll just have that building kind of just pop in there. And to do an overshoot animation, all you need to do is right before that last keyframe, set the scale percentage higher than 100%. So what will happen is it will overshoot 100% and it will scale down. And you can go ahead and do easy ease if you wish. And now we have this overshoot animation and it looks great. And then once before, you can just go ahead and copy your keyframes go to the beginning of your timeline and just go, start pasting in that scale animation on all the other buildings if you wish to do that. And now for all of our buildings animated, we have this overshoot animation. And then you can start applying other basic animations. So if I want to animate the plane, I can just hit P on my keyboard for position and just start keyframing this to say move across our composition. And I can also do this with our cloud layers very simply. So, so ultimately animating is actually a very fast process. But what about those stars, for example? So let's say if I want to add, say, a rotation to the individual stars here in the sky, you'll see that it's all in their own layer. So when something like this happens, what you can do is right click on the layer that's an illustrator layer specifically. You can then go to create and click on create shapes from vector layer. And this will go ahead and create a shape layer here inside of After Effects, which will allow you to open it up, go in the contents, and each group is its own you know, star essentially, it's its own layer. So this will allow us to go into transform group one, alt click the stopwatch for rotation, and maybe do like a time asterisk 20. And then I can just copy this expression and go through every single group and just quickly apply that to the rotation value. So feel free to animate your objects however you see fit. But one thing we want to do here is do some offsetting in our timeline to make this seem a little bit more dynamic. So for example, I can take all my mid-ground layers here and I can just offset them in time by a little bit so they don't all come in at the same exact moment. I'll take my background layers and offset these as well. And this will allow me to have a really cool stacking animation so not everything gets animated in at the same exact moment. Another thing I like to do is add a camera movement to our scene. So I'll come here to layer, new, null object. I can grab everything except for that null, parent it to the null, all the layers, and just hit S on keyboard and maybe shift P to bring up scale and position. I'll go ahead and add a keyframe for those, move forward in time, do like a little bit of a zoom on the scale, so make me 110%, and adjust the Y position so we can kind of maybe pan or move the camera up if you will. So by following the principles in this video, you should be able to put together any scene that you want here in After Effects. If you create any work based off our tutorials, please be sure to tag us on our Instagram at sunduckfilm because I would love to see what you create from our tutorials. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and always be creating.